Welcome back, I'm Nat Chemist, and today we're going to be deciding which molecules have the most drip. If you're not sure what drip is, it's when you have some real bling, when you're looking smooth AF. Drip is when you have swag, which is straight fire. When you have drip, you have a real stylish outfit. It's something that'll stand out, that people definitely notice. And these molecules have some drip that you'll 100% notice. So without further ado, let's get started. If you're not sure what agrochemicals are, agrochemicals are used in the agricultural sector for various purposes. Maybe this is control of molds, maybe it's control of other pathogens towards plants or animals. And the common theme between all of the molecules in today's episode is that they have some sort of agrochemical applications. The first molecule for today is Triflumizopyrum. Triflumizopyrum has quite a bit of drip going on. It's got this pyrimidine ring going on here. It's also got this interesting fused 6-6 bicycle, which also has a betaine within it. So you might be looking at this betaine and think, this is a zwitter ion. But the reason that this is a betaine is you can't like transfer a proton or something to like neutralize out the charge. This is permanently a charged molecule, which is neutral overall. So this is called a betaine. So triflumizopyrum is a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor inhibitor, and it's used as an insecticide against plant hoppers and leaf hoppers. These are some interesting looking bugs that I definitely encourage you to go check out. This one can go into E tier, because it doesn't have too, too much drip going on. You know, it's got that pyrimidine ring, it's also got that fused 6-6 bicycle, but overall, it's a little bit disappointing. So next, we have cyanopyrifen. Cyanopyrifen's a little bit cursed looking, it's got a bit of drip. It's got this pyrazole ring with three methyl groups. It's also got this disubstituted benzene ring, as well as a pivolate ester derivative. The interesting thing about this is it's an enol ester. So that's a little bit, uh, that's, a, that's a bit of drip going on. It's also got an alpha beta unsaturated nitrile. For a relatively small molecule, this thing has a lot going on. Cyanopyrifen was formerly used for the control of mites in fruits, vegetables, and teas. So this one's got a little bit more drip. I think we could probably put this one into at least D tier. So it's not too bad overall. Now I really like this next one, thiamethoxam. Thiamethoxam looks super trippy just because this is a motif you'd never see in your traditional organic chemistry. We have something like a hydrazine, except one of the nitrogens of the hydrazine is like a nitro group. So this is this is a pretty cool one. This is used as a systemic neonicotinoid insecticide, and it's also a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor inhibitor. I also really like this six-membered ring, which has two nitrogens as well as an oxygen. This is like morpholine's cousin, and it's got a chlorothiazole as well in it. So I really like this one. I think this one's probably got to go into B tier at least. Maybe we'll even put it into A tier, depending on how we feel later on. So this one here is kind of interesting, tefluthrin. You can see we got the cyclopropane group with two methyl groups sticking off. We also have two chiral centers. We have a chloro as well as a trifluoromethyl group. And then we have a benzene ring with four fluorines sticking off of it and a methyl group in the para position. This also has an ester group, which is somewhat interesting. Tefluthrin is a pyrethroid insecticide. <laughs> Babes nods having a strong colobondulance. Tefluthrin is a pyrethroid insecticide, and it is a restricted-use pesticide. It affects the voltage-gated sodium channel, and it seems like it isn't great for people to get on them either. This one's a little bit cool, but it's not too, too cool. I think this one can probably also go into D tier, but it's still got quite a bit of swag going on. It's definitely got some drip. Now, this one here is kind of interesting. Fluoxypiprolin's cool. It's a fungicide. It is a relatively new fungicide that's been developed to protect potatoes, tomatoes, and onions, and it was recently approved in some countries, although it hasn't been globally accepted yet. Now, the mechanism of activity for this one isn't super clear, but it's got some real fire swag going on. Here you can see it's got a mesolate group just as part of the active molecule. That's kind of cool. It's also got a dihydroisoxazole. It's got a thiazole kind of tying everything together in addition to this piperidine ring. And we also have a bis pyrazole group. So this is a pretty cool one overall. This one's got to be A tier. It just has so much drip going on. This one's pretty awesome looking as well. This is called Metal Tetraprol. Metal Tetraprol is cool because it has this tetrazole ring in it, which is only found in this one fungicide. As I just alluded to, this is a fungicide. It is a quinone outside inhibitor, which acts at the quinol outer binding site of the cytochrome BC1 complex. And so this is an effective way to treat crops against various types of fungus. This one's used specifically in wheat and other grains. So I really like the presence of a tetrazole here. We also have this interesting pyrazole, which is bound to a benzene ring, but it's also got like an oxygen tying everything together. This one's pretty cool. I think this one's got to go in B tier. I don't think this is too controversial. I think putting it in B tier is fairly reasonable. Now the next straight fire molecule we have here is erisostrobin. 
Arisa Strobin is really cool. You can see it's got a bunch of methyl oxime groups. We got one, two, three. We also have another oxime tying the whole molecule together. I don't know who proposed this or who even made it because this looks like it would have been an absolute nightmare to make and isolate. Having like an oxime as a linker for the molecule just is totally wild to me. Now this is used as a rice fungicide. It's a strobilurin type fungicide. It's used to control leaf and panicle blast as well as sheath blight in rice. This one's pretty cool. I think this has got to go into S tier just because of how much drip this molecule has. Absolutely wild. Now the next one is Famoxidone. So Famoxidone's a little bit underwhelming compared to some of the other ones we've talked about so far. You can see it's got a diphenyl ether, that's kind of cool. It's also got this oxazolidine dione group, but then we do have this interesting hydrazine type linkage through here. So this is definitely going to just cleave open really easily. This carbamate group isn't super duper stable. Now famoxidone is used as a fungicide. It's a quinone outside inhibitor as well. And it's used against specific pathogens such as plasma para viticola, as well as alternaria solani. There's several ones that it targets. It's pretty cool looking, but compared to some of the other ones here, I think it's a little bit disappointing. We're going to probably have to put this one into E tier. Why don't we look at fluoxystrobin? So fluoxystrobin is pretty neat looking. My favorite motif in this whole molecule, though, has to be this oxime linkage in this six-membered ring. I've never seen this pharmacophore before. This is a new motif for me as well. This one's kind of nice because it looks like benzene is holding hands, like world peace. I don't know if this one's going to cause world peace, but it's definitely going to cause less fungus to grow because this is a strobilurin-type fungicidal active ingredient for the control of fungal diseases such as early blight, late blight, leaf spots, leaf rust, and rhizoctonia solani. This has been used on peanuts, tubers, as well as vegetables more broadly speaking. So this one's pretty cool. This cursed cyclic oxime group is probably my favorite one we've seen so far. I think for that reason alone, I'm going to put it into C tier. But I think the most drip that this has going on is it's basically a free advertisement for world peace. So world peace is pretty awesome. I think we're going to have to put this into B tier. So next we have this trippy looking molecule here, azadiractin. Azadiractin is pretty cool. You just look at it and are immediately overwhelmed by all of the stereo centers. You might be wondering, is this a completely synthetic one? And no, it's not. It's a natural compound from the limonoid group present in the neem tree. And it's an antifeedant, which means that it'll prevent stuff from eating it. And it's a growth disruptor against over 200 species of insects. So this is just a fancy insecticide. Now, drip-wise, I think this is one that's hard to compare with. Look at all these rings. We've got three fused rings together here. We have another tetrahydrofuran ring just sticking off here casually. We have another bicyclic system, and we even have a dihydrofuran. So this one is absolutely soaking wet. This has the most drip so far. Easy, easy S tier. Now, this one, tolifluanid. Tolifluanid's pretty wild. Look at this. We have a dichlorofluorothioamino group. Those are a lot of heteroatoms in pretty close proximity. If that wasn't enough, we have a dimethylamino sulfonyl group. This one's pretty wild. I tried looking into the activity of these types of compounds, similar ones like Captan as well, and the mechanism of activity isn't super clear. It seems like in the case of tolofluanid, it's classified as likely to be a carcinogen to humans, which isn't great. This one's used as a fungicide, and it's also used as a preservative in wood. This one has mad drip given its size. I also think this one has to go in S tier, which is appropriate because there's a sulfur in it. This one here is pretty wild. We got probenazole. Probenazole is kind of cool. Probenazole has an atypical structure for a heterocycle. We have an amino sulfonyl group forming a five-membered ring. It's a benzoxthiazole fungicide. This one's used to control rice blast fungus in paddy fields in Japan. It's also used for rice, peppers, cabbage, lettuce, broccoli, and onions. And I tried looking into the mechanism of this one, and I couldn't find a simplified explanation of the mechanism of this one. This one's pretty wild looking. You can see this used to be like an amide, but it's also like a sulfonamide. So you can see this one's actually a derivative of saccharin, that artificial sweetener. So all they've done is they've added an allyl group onto saccharin. Now, at first glance, this is pretty impressive, but then once you realize this is just saccharin, it's not so sweet, is it? So this one can go right into F tier. Now, one of the coolest ones in terms of mechanism here is this guy, AC Benzoler S Methyl. I really like this one. This one's technically a pro drug. The carboxylic acid is the active form, and this one is a fungicide. Now, the neat thing about this one is instead of targeting the fungus and causing the fungus to not grow, what this one does is it actually stimulates the immune system of the plant so that it's able to deal with the fungus. So this one induces systemic acquired resistance, which is the natural defense system of plants. This one's like an indazole, but it's also got uh, sulfur in it. Not a very common motif in medicinal chemistry, 
but I really like this one. I think this drip is pretty dank, so this one can go into S tier. And it's got two sulfurs, so how could we not? Now, Captain, we alluded to Captain. So I first came across Captain when I was working with trichloromethyl sulfenyl chloride. It's the same as this group here, except instead of the nitrogen, we just have a, like another chlorine. So the SCCl3 group is quite a common motif in fungicides. Captain is a general use pesticide. There was barely any information available on it when I was looking into it. And it controls diseases for many fruit, ornamental, and vegetable crops. So Captain's pretty cool. It's got this succinamide group. It's also got this double bond with a bit of chirality to it. Now it isn't actually chiral because this is a meso compound. If you rotate it, it's got a chiral center, but it's achiral. So a little bit disappointing when it doesn't have actual chirality, but I do like to see that this is a Diels-Alder adduct. You can see there's a cyclohexene. And so this was made by a Diels-Alder demaliumid. So cool, cool looking molecule. It's got an SCCL3 group. I mean, that's that's quite a bit of drip it's got going on, but uh, I think we're going to have to put it into C tier. C for Captain. This one here is kind of interesting, triforine. Triforine is a little bit confusing because you might want to say fluorine. This one looks like it had a bad day with chloral hydrate. Chloral hydrate is just trichloroacetaldehyde. This one's got a couple equivalents of chloral in there. This one's interesting because it's a fungicide and, and it's used for black spot, powdery mildew, as well as rust on roses. And triforine's been endorsed by the American Rose Society. Triforine is used for more than just roses, however, as it's used to control fungal diseases in a range of berry crops, stone fruits, poem fruits, and ornamentals. This one's got a bit more drip. It's got a couple formamide groups. It's also got some nice symmetry going on, and who doesn't like a bit of symmetry? I think this one could go into B tier. Why don't we look at Prothioconazole? Prothioconazole is pretty cool looking. It's a broad spectrum systemic fungicide. The way it works is by inhibiting CYP51A1, which is the enzyme required to biosynthesize ergosterol. Ergosterol is a key component of fungal cell membranes. If the fungus can't produce this key molecule, they essentially can't make more cell membrane. This is an effective way to inhibit growth. Now, in terms of structures, this one's interesting. It's got a triazole with the thiocarbonyl group. It's also got a tertiary alcohol, and it's got a cyclopropyl chloride. This one looks like it's kind of holding the whole world together here. It kind of looks like a, a bit of a demented spider. This one can probably go into A tier because it's got quite a bit of swag. There we go. Here we have simoxanil. I like this one because it's got another methylated oxime as well as a nitrile and a couple carbonyl groups, but compared to some of the other ones we've looked at, it's a little bit disappointing. Now, given its molecular weight, it's got a lot of swag given its size. It's packing a pretty big punch for its size, so that's pretty cool. Simoxanil is used as a fungicide for potatoes, field tomatoes, and cane berries, which are just brambles, i.e. raspberries, blackberries, etc. It's used as a protective and a curative once it's been affected, and it's just good broad spectrum fungicide. So this one's pretty cool. It's a little bit disappointing, so I think we should put it in C tier, but it you know it doesn't let us down too much. It's got got some interesting stuff going on for sure. But what has way more going on is this one here, Ephytopyropen. Now to be clear, I said Ephytopyropen, not pen pineapple apple pen. That's a different beast entirely. Ephytopyropen is an insecticide. It's a derivative of parapyropene A. As its name implies, it starts with a phyto, it targets aphids. It's active against common aphid species that damage a variety of vegetables, fruit trees, tea trees, and ornamentals by sucking the sap out of the sprouts and leaves. And the way that this chemical works is it affects insect TRPV channels, which are like heat and pain. And so the insect tries eating it and it's like, ah, no thanks. And so it stops. Now, the reason it's a derivative is they cleave off the esters that the original molecule has. They put on these cyclopropyl carboxyl groups, and this is a this is a cool looking ester. In addition to that, we have this aromatic lactone as well as a pyridine ring. Looks like a, a steroid nightmare, so it's got some drip for sure. And you might recognize that these ester groups are a little bit reminiscent of tinky winkinic acids. And so as this is a bis tinky winkanate, this can go straight into S tier. We have two interesting ones left. The first one is fenpicoximid. Fenpicoximid's kind of cool looking. We have this cyclic dilactone where we have two oxygens in close proximity, at least in the way it's drawn. Maybe in space they're a little bit different. And this is a derivative of a natural product called UK2A, which is a member of the antimycins family. They add in this group here where you have this methylene acetal along with this ester group. And this is from the picolinamide class of fungicides. This fungicide is used for cereal crops, and it inhibits the growth of several ascomycete fungi. So drip-wise, I think this one's pretty impressive. It's got a pyridine ring with a couple alkoxy groups. It's got this double lactone, as well as just like a bonus ester. And seeing this methylene linker to another ester is also pretty sick. So I think this can go right into A tier. Now, last but not least, we have amisulbrom. 
Amos Albrum's cool because we have this Bromo Indole group. There's also a Fluorine on the Indole as well as a Methyl group in the two position. We also have a Sulfonyl group. Now, normally Sulfonyl groups connected to the nitrogen of Indole aren't super stable. We further have a 1,2,4 Triazole group with a dimethyl amino sulfonyl group connected to it. So a couple of really labile groups here. Definitely an interesting agrochemical to be sure. This is a fungicide that's used to control late blight on potatoes, and it's also able to control downy mildew. Now it plays a role as an antifungal quinone outside inhibitor, similar to some of the ones earlier. And I think in terms of drip, this has to be S tier. This is a really cool looking one, and I can't imagine this is super duper stable. Right into S tier. Now, while you might be sketched out by some of the structures of these agrochemicals, it's important to note that the toxins that a lot of these fungi and other pests make can be more toxic than the agrochemicals we use to manage them. This is something people don't often think about when you're talking about whether or not something's organic, and you just assume, well, the organic's been grown without pesticides, but that doesn't mean that the organic's grown without pests. And so if there are pests, the pests can produce really toxic compounds. Now, I've made a couple of videos talking about the mycotoxins that molds and fungus make. Now, maybe you'd be interested in checking those videos out. I'll also include a link to them in the description. Have a great day.